We're going to show you how to use the XCP film holder devices used for manual x-rays. There is three different bars, one for anterior, posterior, and bite wings. There's two different rings. There's one for anterior and one for posterior. Here is the posterior periapical bite block ring and bar. It's used to take films to see the root end of the tooth. The rings and bite blocks do come in different colors, so don't get set on only the yellow ones or the white because they can come in different colors. This is the bar with the bite block assembled. When you have the ring assembled correctly, you should be able to look through the ring and see the bite block centered. If it's not centered, you may have the ring backwards. This is the periapical XCP for posterior with the film. This would be incorrect. Notice how the bite block is not centered in the ring. And then here is the bite block flipped around and reversed, so that is incorrect as well. Here's for an anterior PA or periapical, again, to see the roots of the anterior teeth. So here's the bar you'll need, the ring, and the bite block. This also comes in different colors, so don't get set on the color that you have. Focus more on the shape. Here is the bar with the bite block assembled for anterior. And then the ring on the bar. It tends to look like a chair when it's assembled correctly. And then here it is with the film placed in the bite block. This would be incorrect. The bite block is upside down. Here is for bite wing XCP setup for manual film, the ring, the bar, and the um, bite block. You'll use the straight bar for bite wings. This does come in different colors as well. There's usually white or the red. Bite wings are used to see the mandibular and maxillary on the same image and it's mainly in the posterior to check for caries in between the teeth and bone levels. This would be assembled incorrectly, the bite block's reversed, so you would have to take that bite block off and flip it around. This is called the snap array. In the next video, um, it'll show you how to place the film. For a posterior periapical, you can also use it for an anterior periapical, which is what it shows here. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and set up our XCP for the posterior first. This is our correct arm. We have the bite block here. Um, you're gonna go ahead and put these two prongs in the side of the bite block. So you can do it this way. This is universal for right or left side. So if you were going to do the patient's right side, you would flip it and position it that way. So flip it that way, either way. And then our ring is this one here. I like to call this the nose of the ring. So for posterior, it's off center a little bit compared to the bite wing and the anterior. You can see this one's straight on versus the posterior one's shorter and it's off center. We wanna be able to see our um, bite block centered through the ring. So we slide our ring on. You should be able to see right through there our bite block. If you have this assembled incorrectly, you won't be able to um, see it centered on there. And if you look from the side, most of the ring is on the bottom portion. So you want to be able to center it. This is also incorrect because we're not even going to have our film where the ring is. So your film and the ring should be lined up together. 
So you have your XCP set up, and then we're gonna grab our film. If you feel on the film, there's a little tiny dot. Let's see if you can see that. It's hard to see. You can, um, when you guys feel it in lab, it's much easier to place it in the bite block. So our dot goes in the slot is how we remember it. So you're gonna pull that back. Your film gets held right in there. And then this would be for a posterior PA. Okay, now that we assembled the posterior, let's go ahead and show you how to assemble the anterior. Um, you'll hear us say the word PA. That is just a shortened version of the word periapical. Periapical means that we're um, looking at the end of the root or around the root. So the posterior XCP is for a posterior PA, meaning we want to get an x-ray of the roots of the teeth. And the anterior XCP is... Um, the device we wanted to get an x-ray of the roots of the anterior teeth, so we're being able to see all around the root. So for anterior, we're going to grab the straight, kind of longer, narrow bite block compared to the posterior one, which is shorter and more horizontal versus this one that goes vertically. And then this is our anterior bar. So again, we're going to put those two prongs on the side, and then we're gonna grab the um, straight nose ring. The red and the blue ones are actually the exact same. Sometimes they're white as well. The main thing is just to recognize the difference of the location of the nose, if it's centered and um, a little bit longer versus the posterior one, again, is short and off center. So then we are going to slide the ring down on the bar look and we see the bite block centered on the ring you're gonna get your film here again feel for that dot for the anterior this is kind of an easy way is since the bite block is vertical your film is also going to be vertical so you would again pull the little um, support the back support I guess back here pull that back and then your um, film will grab right in there and then this would be for the anterior periapical, and it's for maxillary. And if you're going to do mandibular, you would just um, flip it around, and this would be for the mandibular. So that is your anterior XCP. All right, the third one here is the bite wing XCP setup. So now we're going to grab the straight bar for the bite wings. Um, we're going to grab this bite block here, and we want to make sure that the um, portion that holds the film is going away from the bar. We don't want it going towards the bar. That's backwards, so we want to make sure that's going away from the bar. You're going to grab the same ring you use for the anterior film, the PAs, so the straight-nosed um, ring. And again, you want to make sure that you're able to see the bite block centered in your ring. We're gonna grab our film, feel for that dot. With bite wings, our dot on our film is always going to be down or towards the mandibular. This is universal for right or left side. And then we wanna make sure the white side of our film is always towards the ring. We never wanna put the colored side of the film towards the ring that's backwards and you won't get a clear image because that's the side of the film that has the lead foil. So you never wanna see the color, make sure you always check and the white part of the film is facing your ring because then the PID and the tube head will line up with this ring right here, okay? And then if you were doing the left side or the right side, this can just flip for um, whatever side you're working on. Okay, and that's your bite wing XCP. Okay, next we are going to go ahead and show you how to use the snap array. This device here is our snap array. Um, it doesn't have a ring that goes with it. It's its own holder. This would be um, for patients that have difficulty closing around the other XCPs that we talked about. So this is another option um, that you can use. It's got 
this wider part and then the narrow part. This is kind of like the little mouth is what I like to call it. Um, and then it has this ring that you would slide down once the film is placed and that keeps that locked and closed so the film wouldn't uh, slide out of here. So to place the film, um, the wide part is always towards the patient's cheek. Obviously the handle would be coming out of their mouth. I'm gonna use our type it on here. So the handle would be going out of their mouth then the wide portion would go towards their cheek. So for the right side versus the left side, um, you're gonna take your film, find that dot again. And if you're taking a maxillary PA, the film is gonna be up high or above um, the surface here. If you're doing a mandibular film, then you're gonna do the opposite. You're gonna slide that down again so we can get the roots of those teeth. Slide the lock down and then that would be for a mandibular. So if we open up our typodont, place this and then they would close around there. Um, upper right is always gonna be the same setup as the lower left. And then the opposite, upper left, is always gonna be the same as the lower right as far as setting up our XCPs go. And for our snap array. So this, for the upper left side, would be the same as for the lower right side. Okay? So that is how you do a posterior um, film for, with the snap array. The snap array can also be used for anterior what you would do is take your film out, slide the lock down, and then the end of this here, you would actually find that dot, slide the film in the end, and then your patient would need to hold this as you line up the PID. So if you're doing the anterior, you would show them, have them grab the handle, and then you would um, line up your PID and go expose your film. So that's how, in case you would if patient can't close and they um, are having a hard time with the XCP, you could use a snap array if you needed to for anterior. The last thing here is we're gonna use a little, what we call bite wing tab. It's almost like a little sticker. Um, instead of using the XCP ring and the bar for a bite wing, you're gonna put the sticker on the white side again, not the colored side of your film. When if you see the blue or there's gray, you're putting the tab on the wrong side. So make sure you have it on this side. You have this little sticker right where it says fold. You're gonna fold that in half. And then it's gonna make almost like a T, okay? And then this is the sticky part. And you want it to be horizontal the same direction as your film. You don't want it to be this way for a horizontal film, okay? Make sure that it's going horizontal, the same direction as the film, and then the patient would close on that little paper. These work really well with um, kids that have little mouths. It's a lot easier to use the tab rather than the bulky XCP. So that is how you use this.